Hey friends, welcome back. I have a little to-do list today. I spent a really lovely day in the garden yesterday, weeding, getting things tidied up, and I did have a bit of a tragedy. I was getting after a bunch of weeds, stuck my favorite hori hori into the ground, and somehow, I snapped it in half. Uh, this is a huge loss for me because I have tried many Hori Horis and this one actually was my favorite. I loved how it fit in my hand. I've got smaller hands and this one was just really, really great. Um, and it also had this kind of cool, uh, irregular, not irregular, but like small teeth, big teeth. It was like the perfect instrument and I snapped it. So um, I'm gonna go get another one before I do the next round of planting, but I wanna walk you through what we're gonna to do today. I am, we're just getting into warmer weather, and so I have been hand watering seedlings, baby things that don't really have a good root system yet, but now it is time to get our irrigation system in the front garden up and running. So I'm gonna redo the batteries in my beehive. Um, I'll put some links below to where we actually set up the irrigation system. And then we are gonna test run it today and I'm gonna walk you through just what I'm looking for as I'm turning on an irrigation system for the season. Next thing is, I was feeling really inspired yesterday. One of my neighbors stopped by. It's my neighbor, Jean. She's 95. She's Italian. And she comes by and, and we share produce with her. And she's just a lovely human. She was actually just here right now. And um, she just got me so excited about growing for the year ahead. Um, she grew up on the East Coast um, as a an immigrant from Italy, grew up on a farm, and now lives in a condo because she's 95 and just totally misses it. So anyways, I just got really excited about what we get to share this week. And so I made a plan. So I'm going to share that with you too. Here we are at the back of the house. This is our massive irrigation setup. Um, we do not have an in-ground irrigation system. So we hooked this up off of the back hose bib. Um, we do have a pressure regulator here to make sure we don't blow everything out. This is our beehive for the cut flower garden. And this is our beehive for the front yard. I will, again, I'm going to link the video below where we really set up this irrigation system. We did get notifications on our phone that the batteries needed to be changed. And what that is, is there's like a little gasket here that gets stuck. But essentially, you're going to change these batteries out once, um, basically at the beginning of the growing season. And so I just remove these real easy and then put them in my Ridwell bin for recycling. Just, you know what, I'll link them below too. They're super awesome. And it always makes me feel good that I can do even more recycling than my city offers. So I'm gonna pop in batteries for both of these. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna turn on the valve and then I will head up in the front yard and we will test run the system to check for leaks and all that good stuff. All right, friends. Well, this is kind of a fun view for you guys to look at. Essentially, I am in the northeast corner of my garden. And from here you can see all of my garden. Essentially, the supply line comes up the side of the house and it snakes its way around the dining patio. And then it cuts over right about here to head to the other side of the pathway and make its way around the raised bed garden. What that means is this is all running on a singular loop. So here we are in the Beehive app, and what you can see is up here at the top, I have, what I'm gonna do is to run my check, I'm gonna choose water manually, and actually I'm gonna bump this up. Let's go to a 20 minute and run. Okay, there we are. I can hear the water actually coming up the supply line right now. So let's take a little tour and see if we can see evidence of it coming through. And this really is like, as you can see, we're, it's warming up. The heat is starting to rise a little bit and the growing season is just beginning. And I want to make sure that this U hedge. This is a Taxus fastigiata. I want to make sure that this gets very well established. It's in its second year, and I find that this is really when that U starts kicking into full gear. Okay, this is the first place where the Nedifen line 
Medifem line departs from the main line, and I can hear it just starting to come through. Oh, there we are. Okay, so this is the Nedifin line, and we have it buried underneath the top layer of mulch. I actually need to add more mulch, and you can see it's bubbling. Ooh. Let's go over to the veggie beds now and see how that's looking. Okay, another spot. This is towards the end of the run before it dives underneath the walkway, and we've got water coming out here. All right, the next place I like to check is in the front beds. Right here, what you can see is I have valves on every single line. So as I plant them out, I turn the valve on, but if I do not have an area planted, I can simply switch this off, and then I'm not wasting water to an area that hasn't yet been developed. And, yep, there we are. Okay. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Okay, so far so good. I wanna check the very end of the run to make sure I've got water flowing all the way through. And then I'm just gonna let it go for a minute. And what I wanna make sure is I should, if, if all of the system is working correctly and I don't have any plugs, I should see little tiny uh, water puddles every six inches or so. So let me zip over to the end to make sure water has reached the end of the track and then I'm gonna let this go for a while. Okay, so this is where it comes down in front of the limelight hydrangeas. See if we can see this. Okay, I've got this little guy bubbling away here. Okay, here we are. This is the very, very end of the line. And as you can see, the moisture on my finger, we do have, this is a little emitter down here and we do have water coming out. It does look like I might have a couple holes that are not functioning, but they should be few and far between. I'm gonna let the irrigation system run for a while to make sure that we are just flushing water completely, completely through all of the lines. There are a couple of emitters that still aren't kicking anything out, so I may need to dive in later and do a little bit more exploration, but the system is working and the water is getting all the way through to the end of each run, so that makes me feel really good. While the system continues to operate and we're just getting a really nice little soak for all the plants, I wanna take you through what I planned out yesterday after I ran into Jean and, and we had a chit chat in the garden. I just was so excited and I really wanted to go in and plan out the rest of my raised bed growing space to make sure I had room for everything I needed. A lot of you chimed in and said that you loved the arch idea, so I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna do an arch here and I'm gonna do an arch here. I may be nuts, this may fail, but you know, here's the deal. Gardening is one giant experiment. So I'm gonna walk you through these two raised beds. Um, I have these beds positioned with the openings running north-south. So this is north up here, this is south here. Um, and I just love being able to come into this space and really kind of work it from all angles. So I will walk you through, and some of these spaces you've already seen me plant up. Last week, I published a video talking about planting my leeks and onions, uh, excuse me, leeks and carrots, which I did right here. And after that video, I thought to myself, I need more leeks and carrots. So I went over here and created a little visual balance, anchoring both of these corners with the same plantings. Um, this, you've also seen me do in a previous video. This is where all of my radishes, my green onions, I have a little bit of arugula and mezclin mix that I seeded down the middle, and of course, my trellis for all my peas. The next thing I'm gonna do is let me take you over here. This is, this is a space that I am kind of gonna be doing a few creative things with. So let's take a look. Here we are in the westernmost bed. I have a rusted obelisk type structure here, and I am going to use this for growing cucumbers this year. On the north side, I'm gonna plant lemon cucumbers, and on the south side, I think I'm gonna plant homegrown pickles, because that is a shorter variety, and so taller kids in the back, shorter kids in the front. I'm gonna leave a little bit of my chamomile forest in place because I think that's gonna be really, really sweet. This is really funny. I had originally drawn this out with doing this area right here. So right here you can see the leeks that I planted in the last video. I originally was gonna do this area planted out with parsley and cilantro, but I 
actually think I'm going to instead flip flop and I'm going to do beats on this side. And then on this side over here is where I'm going to do my cilantro and parsley. Okay. That's what I think I'm going to do there. All right. Next up, these are a beautiful pineapple strawberry. I just have three plants and they were so incredibly productive. And you can see, look at this, all these blooms just ready to go. And this produces the sweetest little white strawberry. As soon as these start fruiting, I will show them to you. I highly, highly recommend this variety. It's just simply the best. On this north side here, this is where I'm going to have a ton of my basil. So we're talking Thai basil, Genovese basil. I may throw in some Tulsi or holy basil here as well. That one I grow for tea. I absolutely love it. As I back up here and we take a look at this area, this is actually where I'm going to be trellising some squash. On one side, I'm going to plant a honey boat. And on the other side, I'm actually thinking I'm going to grow a butternut squash. I fail with that crop every time I've ever tried it, but why not try again? Might as well. This is just one giant experiment. The answer is always no unless you ask. The same thing goes for gardening. Might as well try it and see what you come up with. Flipping around here to the other side, you can see where I have the little baby leeks. They're so stinking cute. I decided to plant two more rows and then more carrots here on this front side. And then going around, check this out. You can see where I have dropped down a little bit of sluggo here and my daikons are, and peas are just coming along so, so, so well. The radishes are looking good. Okay, how cute are these little baby green onions? I did have a few radishes that I think I dropped when I was planting, no big deal, I'll pull those up. And then as we get down here, this is where I pulled up all of the strawberries and instead what I'm going to do is I have decided in this area you can see it's like still drenched in sun I am going to plant cocozelle a cocozelle zucchini it's one of my favorites it is delicious and what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to try to put two in here that may be a terrible choice but i'm going to do it anyways and then i'm going to plant all the way around with spinach so the spinach if i do if i've done my math correctly my spinach should be up first while the cocozelles get going and then really when summer gets super hot the spinach is going to hate their life they're going to want to be done and the cocozelles can take over Last but not least, on this side of the pathway, I'm going to install another arch and I'm going to double down and I'm gonna grow beans on both sides. Beans and squash are a beautiful companion plant and that's usually what I look for when I'm planning out my garden is I wanna make sure I'm always including companion plantings whenever possible. And so we're gonna have beans going up and over both sides of this arch. So that is the plan for the raised veggie beds and I am so super duper excited. I just, I can't wait because I think it's such a beautiful space when it's feeling very just luscious and filled in and all that good stuff. But as I was going through checking on things, I noticed that it's actually time for me to cut back some of my daffodils, the replete daffodils that I planted in the front. They are withering, they are finished flowering. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cut back just the flower and leave the foliage so that it recharges the bulb so I get another bloom next year. I almost forgot one other thing I'm gonna do is my Princess Irene tulips, they're done flowering. And I had these tucked in throughout my containers. So simply all I'm gonna do is go through and pull those tulips. I'm not gonna leave them in there. I may give them to a girlfriend of mine um, because she already has Princess Irene in her garden. And so what I'll do is I'll probably put them in a bucket and send them to her. And then she can let them die back completely and plant them again for a display next year.
And let's just end on a little container overview. This one is so sweet. You can see these daffodils. This daffodil geranium, Narcissus geranium, is just going strong. And I wish you could smell that. I wish you could smell this. It is absolutely stunning. And what I love is that we have blooms from bottom to top. And in case you're curious, daffodils are one of my favorite things to put in a container design because they just keep going forever and ever. Okay, and also in this trio, you can see the container we just looked at here. I've got this little sweet guy who's just being cute. And then this is the one that I pulled the tulips out of. And this clematis is absolutely going for it. You can see it here almost at the very top. And here's the other container that I took the tulips out of. And you know what's funny? Is I feel like it doesn't miss anything. I feel like it's just this calm, sweet container that is nothing more than it really needs to be. It's kind of like the, the brightness of spring is just cooling down a little bit. And then this little container here, do you remember this has my aster and that little sedum in it? It's just nothing fancy, just a little spot, just a little tiny pop. And then if we go around this area, look at this beast, just beautiful. And again, we have this Narcissus geranium pumping out the blooms, you see here. How many are here? We've got one, two, three, four blooms on this one stalk. And even here, what you can see is this one has one, two, three, also four, and one has gone over. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could clip that, but I almost feel like it's not even necessary. I feel like it, it kind of just fades into the background. And here she is at, from a different angle, the hookra looking lovely, the wallflower in full effect, those sweet, cool moments of the Senecio. And I actually just pinched back my pansies and violas and so they're getting ready to flush out again well that's it for me just a nice little light day in the garden going over some plans making sure my irrigation my systems are up and running in place saying goodbye to my daffodils and my tulips um, but i do have those deep 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 purple ones which i can't remember what i planted out there but i love them they're lovely in any event i hope you are having a wonderful week and say hello to your garden for me i'm gonna see you in the next one Thanks for watching.